Hey, thanks for joining us today. Um, Aaron, it's been a long time since I saw you. Last time I think I saw you, you were uh, headed back down under um, on a plane, and now you're back, so good I to am. see you. Jet, jet um, lag is uh, slowly getting over the jet lag. Yeah. Um, I have heard that sometimes you can drink, and I've got one around here, a monster to get over that. Um, no no uh, advertisement intended, but uh, I like to use those. So anyway, let's talk a little bit about FS Logix. Uh, a lot of people don't know who we are or what we, when we started and all that good stuff. So we were started about four years ago yeah. by Kevin Goodman and Randy Cook. They got together. They are our founders. Kevin is our CEO, and Randy is our CTO. And they have been bringing products to bear in the market for a while. Uh, Randy did some SVS stuff, Kevin did RTO and sold it to VMware, and he's off and doing it again. Why? VDI, um, it's been a challenge for a while, as you probably well know. Yep. And we've all had some issues getting to VDI. I think roughly the count is about 3% of the overall desktop space, and there's a lot of challenges that we have to address. So let's talk a little bit about those. I know you're seeing trends in the industry, so why don't you cover some of those? So yeah, so, um I work for Incentra, we're a, a partner that uh, works within the channel and we work with a lot of customers moving to Office 365, uh, customers moving to Windows 10, uh, embracing Microsoft Azure, things like EMS, so I'm actually seeing a lot of Windows 10, a lot of interest in what Microsoft is doing with EMS and mobility and all those types of things. But also because of the business that we're in, we, we do uh, migrations with customers. So customer moving from uh, on-prem exchange into Office 365 and they've got their archives and their mailboxes to migrate. So it's a big part of what we do. And nobody wants to ever give up mail, right? No. <laughs> Every, everyone, wants, everyone wants their entirety of their mailbox. I have mine back to 1999 on CDs. Man, no. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, at Incentra we also have a pretty strong Citrix practice as well. So I think we have a pretty good intersection between uh, what we're doing on the Office 365 piece, getting customers moving from on-prem exchange or Office 365. And also a lot of these customers are either existing Citrix customers uh, or they're all or actually looking at uh, utilizing Citrix, you know, Zen apps in desktop. And they want to get this Office 365 and the Citrix piece working together. And a lot of times the challenge is when they go to Office 365 on Citrix, we don't want to persist that data on the machine, right? Yeah. There are some performance implications. You want to cover those a little bit? Well, well, maybe not just the performance piece, but it's also, uh, you know, I want to get to a point where I want to make non-persistent VDI workable. I want to make Zen app workable. I want the user to have their exactly the same experience that they had the last time. You mean time they like things on. like search? So I, I remember there was a guy, I can't remember his name, that said the number one thing to do to fix performance on a VDI or Zen app machine was to shut off search. Do you recall who that was? Well, that wasn't me. No, it was not you. It was a guy by the name of Brian Madden. Brian. Yeah, Brian used to brag that you needed to shut off search to make VDI perform well. Yeah. And I look at that, and I love Brian to death. I've known him forever, but that wasn't very good for the end user, right? So as we start to look at that, there's challenges that we're addressing there, right? So yeah, it's, well, it's all about changing the user experience, isn't it? We've got a problem where you know, we're consuming too many resources. We need to get as many users onto a box as we, as we possibly can. So one of the first things we're going to do is, is tweak performance, turn things like search off on a Windows 10 desktop. Yep. Uh, you know, and, and going back to the user experience piece, it's about doing the things we have to do that to get that performance right is, is changing the user experience. Yep, and there's a couple things that on the FS Logic side we're able to do. So instead of doing writing to local, where we're having to either give the user a choice, shut off cache, yeah. right, and go into online mode, or turn on cache and deal with it from a cost perspective from IT, things that FS Logic can do is we can actually intercept that, throw it out into VHD so it becomes portable to the user. And are you seeing that hit home with a lot of your users? Yeah, well, you know, users, users know how Outlook should react. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they, they know what Outlook looks like or feels like on a physical desktop, right? So they open up their mailbox or open up Outlook and their mailbox is there. They move through items in their mailbox. Someone's got a large mm -hmm. mailbox. They don't want to be waiting for click on something and wait, click on something and wait, that type of thing. And uh, yeah, search, 
search search among my box I wanted there instantly. Think yeah. about uh, lawyers and accountants. Oh yeah, their both mailbox, of which I really love, right? <laughs> their, mail, <laughs> their mailbox is their filing system. It is their database, yes, yep. and they want to be able to find that stuff quick. And as a customer of theirs, I want them to be able to find it quick because they're billing by the hour, right? Um, and if they have to spend three minutes looking for something on my case, that's an hour's worth of billing. So yeah, I want to make exactly. them as efficient as possible. Exactly. Um, so we talked a little bit about the trends. What's the biggest reason you see companies go into Office 365? Cost. Um, you know, they, they have on-prem exchange servers that cost uh, in terms of hardware, mm -hmm. in terms of maintenance, go to patch those servers, need to make sure they're up and running. Uh, if I have downtime, maybe my exchange environment is poorly managed. If I have downtime, it impacts the entire business. Right. So they're moving to Office 365 to solve that challenge with on-prem exchange servers. Uh, it's also an office application licensing challenge as well. So I want to get away from, from having to have you know, continually, uh, uh, every three years, upgrade office and along, you know, the contracts that come along to actually have that licensing. I don't know about the accounting rules on where you're from, but I know enough about it in the United States. And I'm an it's IT confusing. guy. It's confusing. Yes, it's, no it is confusing. But I know when I used to go talk to my CFO, he would say, Dave, is this capital or is this expense? Yep. And I know with Office 365, the CFOs love the fact that it is an expense, not capital, yep. which means they get to write that off immediately as they spend the money versus having to amortize it over a certain amount of time. Yeah. Are you seeing the same thing on your customer oh, basis? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And and it's also moving you know, moving to a, a user-based consumption model. Mm -hmm. So where, you know, think about on-prem exchange and, and office, it's more of a device-based model, or you know, I go out and purchase that every three years, and it's a big expense. Amortize that over time, um, and and an organization that may shrink and grow as well, I can react a little right. bit more quick, quickly. Well, and you bring up a very interesting point that I want to make sure I point out. I think this is a maturation of IT, meaning yeah. you know. At first, like mail was hard to control, and we needed to bring it in-house where we had control over the people that were going to work on it, right? I could tell them, you're not going home or you're not getting paid until it's fixed, and they would magically work on it. But now, you know, just like my cable, I don't know when the last time was I called my cable company and said my TV wasn't working, right? It's just always on. And yep. from an end-user perspective, we expect the same thing out of mail. And it's really neat to see what you know Microsoft and Google and other providers have done to be able to provide that mail experience 24-7, IT is no longer involved, which means from a company perspective, yeah. I'm not paying five people to run around and fix exchange servers, manage you know, storage equipment, et cetera, et cetera. So I can imagine there's a huge savings there from a customer perspective also. Yeah, and you know, things like what IT does to solve those storage problems, give mm -hmm. everyone a 500 meg mailbox, one gig mailbox. Mm -hmm. Moved to Office 365, I got a 50 gig, 100 gig mailbox. And I can call and get problem. more, did you know that? I actually really? did that the other day for Kevin, um, our CEO. <laughs> I got him a bigger mailbox. They, they oh. upped it to a terabyte. Wow. Lucky him, right? Okay. <laughs> so, all right. Let's talk a little bit about some of the challenges on VDI. You and I have been doing this. We're about the same age. We've been doing this forever, right? And I was telling, uh, I hate um, to admit it. yeah, I was telling Aaron earlier. My first VDI was remotely anywhere on GSX. All right, I had a business problem to solve, so I actually drew up a bunch of machines on GSX and brought them in remotely anywhere. And that was to solve a business problem. But as we start to think about what's going on, I'm sure you're seeing a ton of challenges out there. And let's just talk about those for a couple minutes. I think it can be easily um, uh, you know, shrunk down to user experience. And that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But we, we talk about you know, what a user knows the way an application responds and looks and feels like it does on a physical desktop. Uh, and they want that same look and feel, the same performance, responsiveness that they get in a virtual desktop. So think about what we're doing with GPUs, for example. Mm -hmm. The operating system has nice animations and it pops and it glides around the screen. They want exactly the same feel. Uh, and when I'm delivering a virtual desktop, I want the performance to be exactly the same or, or perhaps even better because I'm going out and I'm spending a fair investment in a remote desktop solution. I want to ensure that, that for that to be successful, the user has to be happy. So I've got to concentrate on user so experience. So in a nutshell, I think what you're saying is if my user experience isn't as good or better than a physical, 
the user's not going to like it. Exactly. I've seen it time and time again. Users revolt that maybe I, that environment doesn't get used in a, in the capacity that mm -hmm. they expected it to. Where they used. go out and buy their own laptop and start doing yeah. things. And next thing you know, you have what was the recent one that went through the uh, WannaCry virus came through and wiped out a whole bunch of people's data. And I don't think that was just because of bad IT management. I think that was people doing their own thing because their user experience wasn't what they wanted it to be. Yeah, maybe. And it's been so easy for users to do that these days. So. Let's talk about what you do specifically around making your VDI deployments successful. Yeah, so going back to what I was saying uh, at the beginning, uh, at Incentra, because uh, we have this really nice intersection between what we're doing with Office 365 and our strong Citrix practice, then we need to look at a solution that provides a great user experience when we put Office 365 on top of Zenapps and Desktop. So of course, we're doing that with FS Logics. So both with Office 365 containers, as well as profile containers. So we're not just solving the challenge of Office 365, whether it's Outlook, OneDrive for Business, Windows Search, giving that user that local-like experience, but it's also log on time. So I want to make sure that the user can get access to their desktop really, really quickly. So we're looking at how we challenge, or how we solve the challenge of profiles as well. And I, I think when we talk about profiles, I think you were a guy, along with a couple other guys, that did a show, a stand-up comedy show as I used to call it. <laughs> There's a hundred <laughs> things wrong with my VDI deployment uh, and so 99 I got, are related to. I got 99 problems and folder redirection is every one Every of them. one of them, that's it. I can't always so remember yeah, we did We did two years in a row. There was Helga Klein, Sean Bass mm -hmm. and myself. So we did a, a lot of time spent in testing and different scenarios. Yeah, we presented those at uh, uh, past synergy events, yeah. And, and for those that aren't deep into the woods like we are, I like to summarize the difference between FS Logics and folder redirection. It's really simple. Folder redirection is fetch and bring it back, right? Yep. FS Logics is intercept the folder and go grab the bytes. And when we look at it from that perspective, it's a total different um, footprint on what kind of data is being transferred. And for the user, that means things are fast. Right? I can take my login times from 30 plus seconds down to sub 20 seconds, even lower if I can eliminate GPOs and things like that. Are your users appreciating that when you deploy it for them? Yeah, well, you know, just think of uh, deploying it for an inter internal system. So mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I'll admit that my primary device is a physical desktop, but I need to access uh, Zen app for a number of our applications that we use. Um, so I'm using it on a fairly regular basis, but when I want to go and access it, I don't want to wait around. I want it to be there immediately. So, that so means you're one of those selfish users too. Exactly. It's got to be as good or better yeah. than your physical experience. Because I'm using this thing locally, mm -hmm. and then I go and access this remote, app, remote application or remote desktop. Why is the user experience different? Right. Um, so that's log on times. I want to be able to launch the application as quickly as possible. And then I use Outlook in that environment because it, in, it hooks in with our CRM system. I want Outlook to be responsive as well. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So you know, I, want, I need everything there. Gotcha. So the last thing, overall we've talked about a lot of stuff. The biggest reason you think FS Logics fixes performance issues? Simplicity. So, you know, I love that word, simplicity. <laughs> I, I keep telling Kevin that we should add an S onto the end of FS Logics, <laughs> and it should stand for simplicity. Um, he so may or may not listen to me. We'll see what the marketing guys so say. Because I'm a consultant, it's you know I, I, I can go and bill the customer by the hour, and that's great. But for my own, you know, I, for, for my own stress levels, mm -hmm. for the customer, I'm trying to deliver the best solution for that customer in the in the shortest amount of time possible. I don't want to have to deal with profile management solutions that I've got to spend an hours and hours on. With FS Logix uh, profile containers, I can do that in 10 minutes. You and, bring and, the same, and the same with the, with the Office 365 piece. Mm -hmm. I can solve that challenge, which people go and do workarounds for that may or may not work and introduce other problems. I can solve that problem in 10 minutes. Yep. When I was uh, director of IT for a very large financial organization, um, we used to have consultants come in and they'd give us very complex solutions. <laughs> and so what I would do is I'd take one of my employees and I'd say, hey, you're going to sit with Aaron and you're going to learn everything Aaron knows. And you're going to know that solution because I never want to have to call Aaron back yeah. because all I want is the solution. I don't want to have to call yep. you every day. It breaks. Yep. So um, we would do that. And then my internal guy would have to go train two other people. 
so that we had redundancy. Yeah. And the reason we did that is I never wanted to have myself beholden to the customer, or excuse me, to the consultant as a customer. Yeah. And it sounds yeah. like you're doing the right thing for your customers by giving them a simple solution that meets their needs, that if it breaks, they're not going to have to hire some very, very expensive guy or gal to come in and fix that for them. They'll have a basic off-the-shelf system that yeah. they can manage themselves. Yeah, and it, and it shows our value to the customer. You know, we by delivering that simplicity and not something that's over-engineered, you know, maybe I'm billing less time, but I'm mm -hmm. showing more value back to the customer. So you now become their in. trusted advisor, exactly. aren't they? You come in the next exactly. time and you say, hey, you know, you need to do FS Logic's apps. Yep. They're like, oh, Aaron did this really well on Profiles and ODFC. Yeah. Let's trust them and move forward. Exactly. All right, well, hey, it has been a pleasure. It's always good talking to you. Absolutely. Have a good day. Thanks.